Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Golden Goal Show, Season 3, Episode 33. And I did not forget because I did talk to one of our guests today, and they said it was their birthday, so... Let's get it, everybody. <laughs> Yes, um, happy birthday. So um, one of you, I just wanted to say happy birthday. So happy birthday to you, Combus. Happy birthday. I hope you're doing a great time and happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. I hope it's my birthday. I'm not really sure. but Okay, well, I declare that it's your birthday today. So yeah. you have to deal with that. You got that? Huh? huh? I'm, happy. I'm still happy. Thank you. <laughs> you be but, okay. I'm, I'm glad to be here again tonight. I am so happy to have you here. Well, welcome to the show, Combez of Barcelona and a fan of Manchester City. We love that. We love that so much. And then also another guest on the show, Veronica, a Tottenham supporter and also a supporter of Mental Health Association. How are you doing, Veronica? You doing great? Oh, you know, uh, nothing matters, but I'm glad to see the season will be over soon. You're saying that, and I just keep getting scared for you. I just... No, it's okay. fine. No, it's good. It's like nothing matters, so like they can't hurt me anymore. <laughs> okay, you know what? Fair, fair. That's, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's how you have to do it. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, otherwise, I'd be sad. So. That's true. Wait, what place is Tottenham in right now, by the way? I think we're in eighth. Okay, so we're well... out of... Out of European spots, but like I don't think we can like get Europa. Like so, it's either, I yeah, I think it's fine. It is what it is. I mean, Chelsea's in twelfth place right now, so you know it's, it's yeah. That's that's that that's that. Well, we can move on before talking about <laughs> any other great teams. Let's just go now to, um, the breaking news. Where's my button? Do 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 do. Breaking news first. Uh-oh. The England squad has been released. Because we care so much about England and Gerald Southgate. Let's make this a little louder. Here we go. No, that's... Talk about that. So, England squad has been released. And let me just release the signing. What does make any sense? So, goalkeepers. Sam Johnston from Crystal Palace. Jordan Pickford from Everton. Aaron Ramsdale. I can't say that. Aaron Ramsdale from Arsenal. Yeah, these. By the way, this is the squad for the Euros in 2024. Really, 2024? It's oh wow, it's already coming. But defenders: Trent Alexander-Arnold, Liverpool; Louis Dunk, Brighton; Mark Gay, Crystal Palace; Harry Maguire. Oh my God! Manchester United: Tyrone Mings, Austin Villa; Luke Shaw, Manchester United; what? John Stones, Manchester City; Kieran Trippier, Newcastle; Cal Walker, Manchester City. Okay, great. Midfielders, Jude Bellingham, Borussia Dortmund, Abrice, Abrice Eze, Crystal Palace, Connor Gallagher, Chelsea, Jordan Henderson, Liverpool, um, James Madison, Leicester, okay, Calvin Phillips, Manchester City, Declan Rice, West Ham, okay, forwards, Phil Foden, Manchester City, okay, Jack Grealish, Manchester City, yep, Harry Kane, Tottenham, so, so, Tottenham Hotspur, yeah, Marcus Rashford, Manchester United, okay, Bukio, Bukayo Saka, Arsenal, yep, Callum Wilson, Newcastle, all right. Um, so I, I mean, I really just questioned the one gigantic fridge in the room, not the elephant in the room, the gigantic fridge in the room, Harry Maguire, what the hell is he doing there? And, um, I guess because the lack of depth in the defenders, that kind of makes sense with Reese James and Chilwell and a couple other defenders out of the way. So Luke Shaw, he's in there. Okay. Yeah. Connor Gallagher. I I guess so. He has the fight in him, so sure, why not? Marcus Rashford, yeah. It's I don't know. Do you, do any of you guys want to say anything about this England June squad? I don't know. Uh, I I think the Harry Maguire one is just a, a, like wild. I I, I agree. Just Connor Gallagher is also her. weird. Yeah, but Here. it's just like I get it to a certain extent. Like um, I know like uh. U.S. Women's National Team sometimes brings along players that aren't always, like, their strongest backups, but it's, like, 
they bring so much morale to the team and they can like lead from a like mental perspective that they're worth bringing along but like I I don't really see Harry Maguire as that and I don't think he should like he when he, he's even played for like United recently he's been so bad like yeah he doesn't even have the pressure of carrying the team on him anymore yeah. himself anymore and he's been so bad I just don't get it yeah he was different uh, during World Cup though like for England I mean, he's always good for England that's that's a Harry Maguire thing that's like Paul Pogba for France it's Lily the same yeah. thing yeah he was good you're right he he was good for England during the World Cup it's just hard to imagine where it's like I guess the thing that before the World Cup, he was at least getting consistent minutes at United. Yeah. Um, so I just, if I were a manager, I'd be worried about like someone being that like important and not getting minutes. Like, I think maybe if he's going to be part of the squad, like, and if he wants to keep his England career, he might need to consider getting out of United and going somewhere where he's going to play. Because, like, yeah. right now, he's barely playing. Huh. I don't know. It's yeah, a lot to understand. ask someone to be able to to perform, you know, on the biggest stage or whatever again after never playing regularly. Yep. Very true. Very true. I, I, I mean, like, yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I feel like he just needs, like, a new place to start somewhere. No, I agree with that. I agree with that. Other than United, obviously, but. Didn't you recently score like an own goal or do something really stupid? I don't know. I, I, I did he? Am I thinking of something? He really plays nowadays, so. Okay. I think he played against Sevilla in the first leg, and he and De Gea caused like together caused a lot of problems. Oh. And okay. I th- I think so. Don't quote me on that, but I remember him playing in like a non-league game. And people being frustrated with him. Yikes. <laughs> okay, well, let me just talk about some people that deserve this. And I'm going to go ahead and just say my truth to it. So, James John- Sam. I mean, I am a Crystal Palace supporter for my second favorite team in the Premier League. And I do watch them on the weekly. And Sam Johnson is an amazing choice for England. I don't want to say maybe the first string, but maybe second string as well. Because he has came up and done amazing for Crystal Palace when um who's the original goalie for them uh Gaeta I... yeah yeah Gaeta yeah. and he's a great keeper too but him being injured and Sam Johnson stepping in a youngster great for him and also Lewis Dung for Brighton deserved Mark Gay for Crystal Palace deserved and of course oh where is he where is he where is he? where is he? where is he? um John Stones yes I'd have to say as well too but Kieran Trippier whew, deserved deserved his just him alone for Newcastle this season, amazing. That's all I am um, amazing. And Kyle Walker, Man City, yeah, he did. He picked up that form the at least the past couple months. So yeah, deserved. And midfielders, Bellingham, Eze, oh Eze, I love you so much. Um, Eze deserved that. Yep, he's been a, such a star for Crystal Palace. Deserved that. Um, Gallagher, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Calvin Phillips, that's that's a little confusing for me. James Madison as well. I guess James Madison. He's good, but I kind of don't get that. So, Calvin Phillips, Man City. I don't. Combis, do you want do you want to say anything about that? Because I don't know. Has he, has Calvin Phillips even played that much for Man City? At least. Well, not not for the city, not too much. But well, basically, with England, it's different. Not only like McGuire, like most of the players, they when they come to the national team, it's like a different vibe for them, different team, different players. They're dealing yep. with a different coach. Obviously their performance also will be different, but but yeah, I'll, he hasn't played much for City, you know. Hmm. Odd. Okay. Any of you guys want to say anything else about this England squad? I mean, it might get replaced, honestly, you never know, but this is just for the qualifiers for the URLs next year. So, yeah. I guess I'll say that I think I'm happy to see, like, not that he wasn't included before, but John Stones being in it, I think he's been, like, kind of a low-key star for <laughs> City since they started picking up steam. Hmm. And uh, he's actually quite a goal threat as well on really? set pieces. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's been he's been scoring more often for oh, them. Yeah, so. you're right. 
Yeah. So uh, I'm just, I think that's like a pretty, pretty solid choice. I hope to see that he actually starts when they play, but who knows? Well, okay. also with the city, let's just realistically, city has a lot of stars. Like one of them, for example, Alvarez right now, like the uh, Argentinian striker. No. Yeah. He's a really good player, but like, and he's right. a backup. Yes, he's a backup for Holland, obviously. But they're they're talking right now. He's he might transfer to um, Byron Bayern Munich, but Alvarez. Yes, I hope he does, though. Honestly, really, cause... you hope that? Same. Yes, yeah, what? I think I think it'd be great. I, want him I to think he'd play. he'd thrive. Let's play, in the first team he has to play because he has the potential. Everything he's a great striker and everything how old he, is he he's he only like 19 up. no he's 23 <laughs> i think he's what yeah yeah he's like around 23 24 wow kids grow up so fast Dang, <laughs> yeah. nice. i thought he was like 18 damn <laughs> okay well i mean yeah i mean that's weird i don't know i like him as city honestly him in holland i like them as city but him going to bayern and that would definitely help their you know number nine situation as well too so yeah they they need someone in in that spot and i think he's a great choice and everything after especially after the world cup he was amazing in the world cup for argentina Mm -hmm. he helped them a lot and then he transferred to city and we did we were seeing that like whenever he plays this guy's like magic yeah scored against chelsea i know yeah (laughs) amazing the goal was amazing yeah easy too easy Ah, it's okay. All right. Well, guys, I usually just do one or two words, but I wanted to talk about this. So let me just get one or two words from you, Kambez, about this squad. It can be any one or two words you want. For me, it looks it looks solid. Okay, great. And then Veronica, one or two words for this? Lopsided. All right. I it's an odd word, but we move. All right. Now on what? to it's okay. <laughs> On to the next one. <laughs> oh, this is the, actually an interesting one. I literally just found that out today. So, Mason Mount, woman admits stalking chess, LC midfielder, and former teammate, Billy Gilmore, TikToker, Orla Melissa Small. Oh, sorry. 21 pleaded guilty at Westminster Magistrate Court on Wednesday, stalking Mason Mount and his former teammate, Billy Gilmore, 21 years old as well as harassing Chelsea defender Ben Chilwell, 26. So, a woman bombarded Chelsea midfielder Mason Mouth with messages in four months stalking campaign after he broke off the relationship a court has heard. So, basically, she pleaded guilty, and upon informing Miss Sloan of this, he has been subjected to a bombardment of messages. He has began asking her to stop messaging before blocking the number, then he began to receive messages from new numbers. Each time he would block those numbers, there would be messages from another number. Yeah, she used 21 different numbers to contact Mason Mount. Some messages including collages of photos of players of the player with other women. <laughs> oh my god. Damn. What court, the heck? <laughs> the court heard that in one message from an Instagram account using the name Devil Baby, she said, I can morph at any time, so let me, me apologize and set things right. <laughs> Another showed an Apple account buying a new number for £12.99 with the word saying, I'm not buying food anymore, so I can get more numbers. I will be faster. Than- what the fuck? <laughs> Cetal said to Mount, um, concerned she had an obsession or a fixation with him and he didn't know what she was capable of. And Statement Mount said, Miss Sloan knows roughly where I live and where I train. I'm worried if she is unable to contact me, she might turn up to my training center. Oh my god. I have not been able to sleep and I have had to take sleeping tablets, he said. It's had a negative effect on my performance and professional life being at a new town where I am... Oh, this is talking about Billy Gilmore, by the way, because, you know, she... uh message him as well too and had the same feelings i don't have any friends or family it's really upsetting poor billy gilmore he moved to brighton from chelsea oh my god guys this is this is other stuff so um yeah she also stalked as well uh ben chilwell too i guess she has a thing for chelsea players and yeah it's that's distressful that's this i didn't read too much into this story i just knew it was like some stalking and stuff but jeez 21 numbers 
<laughs> oh my that's God. like so uh, so scary like and i can't imagine how frustrating it must be to be like a young player trying to make it and then have this like this person just harassing you constantly and you like in england like they have really strict libel laws mm-hmm. so like you can't like come forward and say stuff about people until you're really like able to back it up legally so they probably had to be really quiet about all this while it was happening i just, did not know that's anything really about tough. this by the way so that i mean yeah. did you no no this is the first i'm hearing about it that's terrible Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's uh oh, poor poor Mason man. It's kind of maybe it explains some of his performance as well too because he's been stressed. So yeah, I'm sure it's very stressful for their professional life as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and also poor Billy Gilmore as well too, who moved to Brighton and she's been trying to harass him too. So okay, um, one or two words for this, uh, Veronica. Some nice two words, or one word, whatever you want to say. Upsetting. Yeah. Okay. Um, Combus, one or two words for you. Tragic. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Okay, moving on to um, some other news that's upsetting and tragic. Mason Mount. Um, basically, Mason Mount favors Manchester United talks expected in due course to join. Mason Mount could crown this miserable Chelsea season by choosing to leave the club at the time of Manchester United. While there's nothing official in any way, shape, or form about this, yet the 24-year-old is widely expected to leave Chelsea this summer with the contract set to expire the next year. No sign of extension... Ex- I cannot speak English. The extension in sight. The likes of Liverpool and Arsenal have also been linked, but according to Athletic, Mount's leaning towards Manchester United. I don't know what leaning means. Maybe is playing FIFA career mode and sign for them and they got it or something like that. So a move, a move of 60 million is suggested, but Chelsea star boy is still in due talk with Chelsea, but it's still far for any type of agreement. So it's not exactly clear on what Mason wants, but if he wants to leave Chelsea so badly, whether it's us not offering him enough money or influence or whatever, it's something more complicated than that, but it sounds like we're fighting a losing battle. So, ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Frank Lampard was interviewed about this as well too on his latest press conference for head of Manchester United, and they were talking about this. And he said in an interview, "It's Mason Mount, a lost cause. I don't know. That's not my answer to make, but that's between Mason and the club. So, yeah, nothing really to speak more about this, but it's God, it's kind of looking sad about this. So." Okay, one or two words to describe this compass. Well, Mason Mount is he's a great player. He's young. It's just like he needs he needs to start shining again. And it's actually funny because I was reading this news and I was going through the comment section and see like what the United fans has to say. And then a lot of people were saying like another Maguire, which which I don't see it like that, but. No. I feel like it would be an interesting transfer. Yeah. It could be good. It could be bad. You never know. So, okay. One or two words for this compass. What do you think? Interesting. Okay. Like that. Veronica, one or two words for this? Silly. Did you say silly? Yeah. I don't think it's a good idea. Okay. Fair. Fair. You think it's another Mata situation? No, I just think he would thrive under posh it, yeah. it would be i i think i i don't know what united's midfield is going to look like in the future because they're probably going to have to change a lot but like i just don't know how he'd fit but i know how he'd fit with posh okay fair fair all right well now let's now move on to the next and that is indeed oh the good thing for arsenal supporters at least okay osaka Arsenal winger signs a new long-term contract with Mikel Arteta's Gunners amid killer season. So, Arsenal and England winger Makai Osaka signed a new four-year contract with the Gunners. The 21-year-old became the first Premier League player to hit double-digit goal and assist tallies this season. So, Osaka's new Arsenal deal lasts until 2027. So, that's basically all the news I literally have to say about this one. So, I mean, it's great for Arsenal, honestly, to see 
the he's probably going to become a captain for the club in the future. I'd like to see that him and Odegaard doing absolutely beautiful this season. So, why does he look so hench in this photo? Damn. Okay, he's been in the gym. All right. Um, Combis, one or two words to describe this. Well, me personally, I like Sokka. He's been playing really good, and he fits for Arsenal. And I think it's lovely to see him resign again for Arsenal, and he's going to play for them. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Veronica, one or two words for Mr. Henchman right here, Bakayo Sokka, the star boy for England. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to the next news. All right, so next news. Uh huh. I didn't press the button. Uh, Juventus deducted ten points by the Italian Federation for false accounting. Dun dun dun. So Juventus has been dogged ten points in new ruling by Italian Football Federation's appeal court after an investigation into club's transfer dealing found evidence of false accounting. Oh my god. So basically, Juventus were handed a fifty point penalty in January, where several members of its formal board were also given a ban for football activities, including former president Adria Angeliani, and the point deduction was suspended last month on the appeal, the country's highest sports court within the Italian Olympic Committee, and referred back to the Football Federation appeals for court new trials. So basically, they were, you know, they got a revoke. They were in seventh place and then they got pushed to second place chap it's like football let's go the old lady sings again but then the old lady died with uh <clears throat> during a three-hour hearing on monday federation prosecutor i am not going to say the word i'm gonna try it there we go requested an 11 point penalty for juventus and he asked uh, for nine back in january and chin also requested eight month bans for seven seven former Juventus directors. So, yeah, basically, uh, Juventus got booked, and they are currently sitting in. Um, I'll just go to the the league right now. Honestly, where is it? So yeah, they are sitting in currently seventh place, back where it started. <laughs> so, I mean, at least they might get Europa Conference League. So that's good about that. But yeah, um, yeah, about that. So, lovely stuff. Uh, Veronica, one or two words to describe this beautiful news for the old lady that tripped and fell. Funny. Okay, fair. Fair enough. And then, Combez, one or two words for this one? Um, sad. Sad for the lady. Sad for the Juventus. Even, I mean, literally even last season, they got reduced some points for some issues. I forgot really what it was. But, again, I don't know what's happening with them. And like after Ronaldo's departure, they're they're literally lost. I don't know. Yep. Aren't they in the final right now though? Against Sevilla. They ha aren't they in the final against Sevilla right now though? No, they got knocked out by Sevilla. Oh. Sevilla are playing oh. Roma. Oh Jose okay. Roma. Okay. Whoops. Yep. Okay. Well, swiftly moving on to the next news. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um huh. Next news is indeed. Oh my god. Um, I was waiting for this one. Okay, let's get serious for this. This is fucking. I uh, not, not trying to cuss. Uh some BS. Racist abuse against Amid Real Madrid's Vinicius Jr. must lead to a charge change within La Liga. So unless uh I'm not gonna read this article because I already know. So basically, Real Madrid were playing Valencia, and some chanting were going on by the Valencia supporters before, during, and after the game. And this has happened before, not surprisingly, with La Liga. Happened in Serie A too, but now for Vini as well too. And so blatantly, to his face as well too, men, women, and children as well too. Because, you know, we have some good parents over there. And just chanting at Vini, a word that is um, indeed called mono, which means monkey, in Spanish. And of course, you know, so much of the Valencia, this was echoed throughout the whole stadium. And Vinicius literally was like pointing at the certain person that was cussing at him too, right in front of him, pointing at him as it shows on the screen right now, if you can see on YouTube, pointing at people that were actually calling him that and referees trying to back him up saying, I mean, I can... There was a conversation between the referee and Vinicius as well too, and uh, we can we can talk about this so like for hours and hours. But 
only thing I know is now is this is getting fined and the Valencia crowd is going to get fined. So that's actually great about that. Several bands have been taken care of. So, but obviously not enough, not enough, just fines. So far, it's only the only thing that's been deducted is fines against the club. So that's if that's sad, that's sad. If this happened in England, oh, you 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 <laughs> you would know that some prison tie would be sentenced for some of the fans, and as well, other fans would help um to point those fans out. But I mean, I I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop talking. You guys, you guys can talk about this all you want. I mean, just yeah, I said enough. Well I heard like uh, Valencia they banned three of their fans uh lifetime from entering the stadium again and watching the games like three fans who like who was cussing at the um, at Vinicius like directly uh, I heard about that like th three of the fans they got banned lifetime from entering the any of the game yep. which I'm not sure if that's true or not but that's what I read on the news but basically just... overall yeah yeah keep going sorry 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 overall i don't i think it's, it's like racism generally shouldn't be part of a sport and like i know i don't like vinicius as a madrid player and the way this guy is like always it's how he is like he always has something going on in every single game and which is not okay with that with with him himself either but that's how he is at the end of the day and but being racist like that and calling him names and stuff it shouldn't it's it should never be okay and yeah yeah i don't think there should be like any caveats about like he could literally be out there like punching people in the face every game and it it, it has nothing to do with his race and I think they need to do something more where y you might have to start stopping games if if it's going to be like that. If the fans are going to be like that, then then you can't play. Because if you – like, you can ban a couple people, whatever, but that doesn't stop, like, this massive group of, like, you know, people people get uh, – group think they're all going after him, and no player should, like, work in an environment like that, like – no one should have to deal with it ever, but as a league, like that's like a company that's taking care of its employees. Like he makes the people in charge of La Liga a massive amount of money by playing in the league. Yeah. He should not be harassed at his workplace and and have like honestly very little done to prevent that from continuing. And he is being targeted harder than anyone I've ever seen in my lifetime so it needs to start being drastic measures taken to protect him or, or honestly like I don't know maybe UEFA needs to step in like higher governing bodies need to start giving fines to La Liga like there needs to be some some backlash that is actually like actually causes like people to care because the problem is banning three people, it's like, sure, those three people are upset, but nobody believes it's going to be them. It's not going to stop people from actually doing anything. There needs to be actual consequences that make people think, like, oh, this is, this is like, I'm not going to get away with this. I can't do this. Because otherwise, they'll just keep on pulling at it more and more and more. Because obviously, their morals as individuals isn't stopping them from mm -hmm. doing it. And you would think it'd yeah. get better since it's 2023, but <laughs> but no, uh, no, no, no. Okay, well, um, I hate to add this. I, I really hate this at this time. Um, we have another guest joining us, my co-host of the show, um, Solomon. Um, you kind of joined at a very dark time right now. So we were just talking about Vinicius Jr. and the racism accounts that are going towards him. So, um. If you want to talk about anything of this, we kind of just like talked all about this. Uh, Veronica had a whole speech about it too that we should literally show to La Liga to make them change their minds. But yeah, um, do you have anything you want to say about this? You just I'm just throwing you into the fire right now for this. This is news. Jesus Christ. Oh, we referred to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, as always. 
it's it's very bad. I don't know. Even the response makes uh, it doesn't make sense at all. Like blaming the victim for the act of violence. I don't know. It just seemed very weird response, and it's it's not isolated. Uh, like. Uh, incident in Europe as well that mm -hmm. you know what happened to Lukaku to a lot of great players uh, and it, it just seems like to get worse and worse with the introduction of like social media and then also that is more true. fancy equipment um, documenting those sort of stuff so and then the worst league seems to me like the Italian league or the Spanish league and the thing is when you blame something to this person that's happening to them it's like what it doesn't even make sense but um yeah um it just seemed very weird and there's a lot of things even the the english premier league is not immune to this sort of stuff you know what happens but there is a lot more restriction there's a lot more um i guess since it's the most watched there's a proactive um stuff that happens as well and uh, but yeah, it's, it's just sad to see in 2023 somebody as young as 22 uh, having to face this sort of discrimination and then having the league to come out with uh, ludicrous stuff. Yep, uh, I think they forgive this red card after though. Yeah, they did, they did, they absolutely did. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I didn't want to get into all this because I could have talked about an hour for this because, um. Referee yeah. did give him a red card for um I think he barely even slapped someone in the face even though he was getting choke holded like Randy Orton yeah in MMA it's so bad and yeah there was it's there's so much I mean also La Liga president basically didn't even apologize to Vinny <laughs> he was like, condescending as hell I was like what the is that man it's ah uh, and the referee as well too being a dickhead about it and when he should have stopped the game obviously. After hearing yeah. the chance going on for that long, and it's the even, whole situation is messed up, man. I yeah, it's... even Ancelotti when he was doing the press, he said like the policy, like the the policy is that if you see something happening, you're supposed to stop the game, and then yep. like everybody seems to be on it, like uh, like on the fan side or like saying, oh, you can't just blame the entire stadium for an act of few but then if you think it's a few people then point them out report them mm -hmm. not just if you if you don't act um against wrong you're also complicit in that wrong if you don't say something you're complicit in the act of racism so it exactly. doesn't make sense yeah yeah Remember and i think like I, I wouldn't want, like, a player in any league to play under those conditions. Like, even if you want to see your team play and you want to be there, if that's happening, then the game shouldn't be going forward because it it's it's not the type of – it's not what we want for the future of the game. So it's mm -hmm. like it, it is worth it to make the sacrifices to games now to try to make a better future for players. Yep. When was the last time, like – People actually walked off. I feel like this happened like maybe last year. It was year or PSG. Like uh, I oh, remember right. PSG yeah. walked off during a Champions League group stage, I think. Yep. Maybe. And I remember like the, it was because the ref said something racist. Oh, you're and, right. Yep. Yep. And so they walked off and they had to replay the next day. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But this was this was the whole crowd, though. This was the whole entire crowd singing it, echoing through the stadium. So ridiculous. I, there, I remember there were some national league or nations league games, uh, where like Hungary couldn't have any fans in the stadium because of all the racist abuse towards Raheem Sterling. Oh, like yeah. they they literally couldn't have fans in the stadium because of how bad it was. Uh, just crazy. 2023. 2023. That's... Yeah, okay. Well, let's move on from this depressing news, and only I can say that hopefully La Liga can take some precautions with this next time, and uh, just do better, people. Come on. What the, what, I, I don't know. Okay, well, next news. Let us move on. 
and um inundated. Messi that is crying right now. So basically Ooh, Lionel Messi, FC Barcelona return, ruled out. Uh oh. Players camp reportedly prefers Saudi Arabia. As of today, Lionel Messi potential return to Barcelona almost ruled out, with the player's father and agent, Jorge Messi, preferring to move to Saudi Arabia, maybe because he wants a tan or maybe because he wants more mojitos. Messi becomes a free agent on June 30th with his two year Paris Saint Germain contract expiring. Though Argentine's desire remains to return to Barcelona, um, Betev, the Spanish newspaper, reports Jose Messi, Messi's dad, has been seduced. Why is that used in this article? That's that's weird. By a mouth-watering offer made by Al Khalil, and that is three hundred fifty million pounds. Oh, no, sorry, euros or three hundred seventy-seven dollars a season offered to continue his career at the Middle East uh, club, which would immediately set him. To be the you know highest paid player in the world, <laughs> with rival Cristiano Ronaldo also being there too. So, yeah, I mean, um, Barca is only able to offer him reportedly twenty five million euros a season or twenty seven million dollars a season, and yeah, the Catalans have been to prove La Liga that they are to make their greatest ever players second stint. For the club a world amid financial difficulties so yeah um messi's crying on the screen one or two words for this news combes you are a barcelona supporter so let's hear from you if you want to talk or yeah. say whatever not only messi even i'm crying <laughs> what but, yeah You're crying well no i'm not crying but <laughs> i was just saying that <laughs> it's sad but um I still have hope for him to come back. The only issue with Barcelona was that they couldn't get a green light from La Liga to get him back, even though Messi really wanted to come back to Barcelona and play for another one or two seasons. And, uh, well, if we're being honest, um, the offer from Saudi Arabia is really crazy. It's way too high. It's like four times the amount of money he's making right now. Oh, yeah. It's a really tough decision to make for him personally. Um, even if he wants to play back to to the club, he is basically his whole life. But again, we're talking about lots of money, four times the amount of money he has been making right now or for the past couple of seasons. And it's a really tough situation and tough decision to make. But I hope I wish him the best. I'm sure even if he moves to Saudi Arabia, he's gonna be the best still. And I still have hope for him to come back this season to Barcelona. You can only hope so. You can only hope so. Exactly. Uh, okay. Well, um you I mean Solomon, do you wanna talk say one or two words about this? You can talk about this or just say one or two words. Whatever you want. Really, I'll love to you. It it is what it is. Or if you don't want to talk about it at all, it's okay. I understand. Messi's crying on the screen, and that gives us all time to cry too. So it's okay. Um, Veronica, or Solomon, do you want to say anything? Ah, uh, no, not really. Like, I mean, it, yeah, it's it's good if they. To be honest, they have a lot a loads of uh, talent. They they hardly need. Yeah. A man who's about to retire, but the, a lot of money is involved. So, to me, it you take the vacation. If, if it was me, if it was <laughs> MLS and just live the best life, you know? Yeah. He already yeah. got enough money. I don't know what he would need. I don't think he's also the ambassador for the Saudis for other sponsorship. Yeah. So, I don't know. If you want to make like, uh, tons of tons of money then that's the route but if he wants to just live comfortably enjoy and, football enjoy football and just play uh in the MLS and then just retire from there I don't know wait <laughs> until the World Cup and then retire I guess yeah you never know you never know it could happen okay. Veronica you you have one or two words you want to say about this or 
Yeah, I completely agree. I think he should come to Miami. He'd be oh such a superstar. I'm not even kidding. I think he'd have a great time. I think he'd have fun. Um, mm-hmm. Sure. You Like, it's the thing where he's like, how much money do you really need? He probably has enough to set up his, like, great grandkids for life. You know what I mean? That. More than that. I'm like, <laughs> like, like, like on my living standards, you probably his, his, like, he would have generations of, of people in his family covered. But like, you know, with, with how much he wants to spend, I don't know how, how crazy his life is, but still, you come to Miami, you'd be like the biggest star this league has ever had. And yeah, don't, don't they say all like, of America would come see him? Yeah, don't they say like the MLS offered to name every game as a messy homecoming? Like every <laughs> yeah. stadium he would go. Yeah. There was some sort of crazy offers by the MLS as well. And, and like it would be like, I don't know, the MLS would probably be willing to like, like for example, the NWSL pays like any player that plays for their national team they'll pay extra money to them apart from what their club pays them because they think it's good for like growing the league. I could see the MLS like giving him a separate contract in a, a, like like, in addition, they'd want him there. I'm pretty sure Uh, he would like to own a sports team and they can give him a discount like a, like Like they can give him shares in a a team. There's a lot of cities that would need a, a team like Austin, like, a lot of them could use that, and then they would he would get some sort of crazy discount, and he would make a billion dollar in the future. I don't know. There's a lot of you know what the actual thing he should definitely do is like I bet you he really wonders what it's like to live in Chicago, Illinois. Oh my and god! And he should take advantage. <laughs> oh, for the fire. He should, he should DM Shakira right now. He's like, hey, Shakira's <laughs> gonna say, yeah, the weather's just like in Barcelona right now. It's it's a, it's beautiful here. It is actually well, nicer. Is, though, are Portillo's hot dogs really that good? And then he'd he'd come. Yeah, Messi has okay. Portillo has hot dogs as his home screen confirmed. <laughs> that is definitely what Messi is saying. Oh my god, got a no. mood board and it's just the bean, a big yeah. picture of the bean. Yeah, as yeah. a hot dog, the bean as the hot. Dog. <laughs> oh my god. Yep. Honestly, I think Messi should play in Barca for two seasons, then go to MLS. That's just my approach. That's right. right. That's my dream. That's my dream. That's what I want it to happen. That's what I hope will happen. If he goes to um, Saudi Arabia, gets that money, same as Ronaldo selling out, but it is what it is. Mm. That's, yeah. Okay, well, let us now go to the last news. Is It is indeed a crisis. Okay, well, it's not really that much of a crisis. It kind of is. So, Chelsea confirmed Benoit Badiashil out for extended period with injury. So, but no, it's Badia Shield. It will be out for four months now due to a hamstring, rather, or a groin issue. Ben Clampard has said, and this has been kind of a big deal for Chelsea since Pochettino was supposed to come into Chelsea and Badia Shield is supposed to be one of the major parts of the defense for Chelsea's new players. So they're trying to find a new player. As well with uh, Cowell coming back from Cowell, 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 sorry, um, coming back from Brighton after doing amazing over there. So to join Chelsea, but yeah, it's uh, I don't know. It's kind of sad for at least for Chelsea fans because he is a great player as well too. So big miss. All right, uh, I'll do one or two words for this Cumbus. Just one or two words. Well, I don't know. Measurable. Great, I like that. And then Solomon, one or two words for this one. <laughs> Yeah, it's very bad news. Yep, agreed. And Veronica, one or two words for this. You are not a Chelsea fan, so I expect anything for you. Bummer. <laughs> Sarcasm. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> well, everybody, that was the lovely Premier League. And now let us get into the lovely Premier League. And let's get into it right now. Mm-hmm. Bye, All right. So... Premier League, first place, Manchester City, or might I say, the Premier League champions of the 2022-2023 season. Congratulations to Manchester City. Yay, round of applause. I didn't see it coming from a mile away. Second place, Slippy Slippy Arsenal. They slipped in, found out they needed a slippery win wet sign. That's what it is. And then third place, Newcastle United. Getting 
Champions League football for the club. Congratulations to them. Big thing for them since 2007, I believe, or 2003. But congratulations to Newcastle. Also, Manchester United, two with them. Fourth place, fifth place, Liverpool, sixth place, Brighton. Congratulations to Brighton for getting Europa League football after the tie with Manchester City today. Great job for them. And then the bottom of the table, Leicester City in 18th place, Leeds United in 19th place, Southampton in 20th place. Ooh, it's coming down to the wire. It is coming down to the wire. Man City 37, let's get into it. This past weekend, Tottenham, Brentford, 1-3 to three for Brentford. Yikes. Uh, Liverpool, also via 1-1, one one, a great result for also via and Liverpool shaky result. Wolves, Everton. One to one, a draw there. Not good for Everton, but at least it's something. Bournemouth, Manchester United, one to nil for Manchester United. A crucial win for them against Bournemouth. Then Fulham and Crystal Palace, two to two, a great game if you want to go watch it again. But a tie all here. Nottingham Forest and Arsenal, one to nil for Nottingham Forest, shattering the dreams of men, women, and kids everywhere in the red and white shirt of Arsenal. Ah, uh, losing. It is what it is. West Ham United and Leeds United. 3-1 to one for West Ham United. Kind of breaking it for Leeds United. Sinking them lower in the league as well. West Ham saving them from any relegation point. Brighton, Southampton. 3-1 to one for the Brighton Seagulls. Putting them even closer to European football, which they did achieve today. Congratulations to them. And then Manchester City, Manchester City and Chelsea FC. Not really the result. Manchester City wanted, not really the result. Chelsea actually wanted as well too, but one to nil for Manchester City. And, you know, kind of securing it for them, even though they already won. Surprise. Newcastle and also Leicester City, nil to nil. A huge result for Leicester City. If they lost this game, it would have been not that good for them. It would have been terrible for them. But, yep, getting a point at least. And Newcastle tying as well too. And Newcastle still doesn't really matter. They get Champions League football. And then, of course, Manchester United and Chelsea play on Thursday, which probably this already happened by the time this video is released. So, Veronica, hello. Only time we'll talk about Tottenham in this show. Tottenham, Brentford, what happened? Ivan Tony, did he bet on this game or what happened? <laughs> so, um, it was sad because yep. we actually looked uh, good for yep. 45 minutes. Harry Kane scored a really good goal. We probably should have had two or three. And then the second half, uh, you know, Brentford made some good changes. Uh, Spurs just didn't, like, wake up at all. It um, was, like, to be honest, going into the game, I expected to lose just based on how Spurs have been and Brentford's form has been pretty good. But it was such, like, a catfish game where we looked good and then we, like, capitulated so badly. Um I will probably try my best to forget that game existed. Mm -hmm. um, Harry Kane's goal was still good. Um, and uh, that it didn't teach us anything besides the fact that things are not good. I think yeah. um, losing that game like took us out of the running for Europa League positions. Like It made it mathematically impossible. Um, but you know, at this point, we need a rebuild, so whatever, who cares? Again, nothing matters. It's fine. Mm, mm, it's whatever. They can't yeah. hurt me anymore. What doesn't kill you make you stronger? I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's that. just, like bumble. Okay. Mm. Well, we'll skip over that. Enough pain for you. It's fine. Um, yeah, it's we, fine. We, we could talk about now um, Arsenal slipping up. We love to see it. Thank you. So, Tywell, Iowa Knight, the amazing striker for Nottingham Forest this season. Even though they are close to getting relegated, but it looks like they possibly won't. Yeah, they don't. They won't get rel. Will they? Uh, no, they can't get relegated. So good for Nottingham Forest. But yeah, Arsenal going down to second place. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's a huge unfortunate circumstance for Arsenal because they did amazing this season. They were on top for 269 days or 267 days. That's amazing for them, but. People are still treating it like they're going to get relegated. But, you know, huge job for Arsenal. Great job for Odegaard. And as well for secret agent Jorginho. I love you so much. I, I'm so glad you left Chelsea to help Arsenal slip their title chances. I mean, super agent Jorginho. I love you. 
Okay, well, we can now move on to um, uh, Manchester City and Chelsea. I mean, I'm sure, Solomon, you watched this game. Combez, did you happen to watch this game as well, too? Or were you out partying with all the people that you party with? Well, I did watch Alvarez scoring that amazing goal. But... Great, so you watched the game. All right. Um, yeah, this game, it was a little... It was, it was Chelsea. It was Chelsea. Missed opportunities. Um, Sterling, Sterling proving that he wants to play for City really bad by missing all the goals for Chelsea. So, and also proving to Man City fans that why he left. That makes sense. So, um, Solomon, do you want to talk about this at all? Oh man, I'm gonna be honest with you. I just it was just too painful to watch mm -hmm. for the full game. Yep. So I stop halfway through and just switch to Dortmund versus uh, uh, Angus. So That's I'm just, smart. yeah, like I just can't take it. It's just easier to just poke your own eye than to watch them play. And they were playing like not even the starters for Man City. And we still lost and we still lost like terribly. And there was a goal actually that was disallowed, but. If it yep. wasn't for that, if we would have lost. And we we lost like to kids. Like those are not even they can't even make it to the like to the first team. Those are just people uh and we played that Man City besides, C team. Yeah, like this B team on City. So it's like I just can't like I just can't watch it. And um and we managed to concede a goal in like in the twelve minute or so by Awful. I know. I understand. Like we have uh, defensive, uh, like uh, struggles when it comes to injuries and stuff. But come on, we got to still do better than just walking around in the pitch. Not running, just walking yep. around. Like you, if you see, yeah, yeah, a lot of our players, they were just, they just look hopeless and waiting for the season to be over, which is mutually shared. But. A yep. feeling that's mutually shared, but it's just not professional. I just so painful to watch. I can't, I can't emphasize how much it was like. Ugh. Yep, and yeah, some parts so... of the game, it literally looked like it was a training simulation where there was like exactly. nobody was moving. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if if this is how they play, I can't imagine how did they practice. Like, what's mm. the practice look like? Probably Kai Havertz is eating gummies in the back. Um, Sterling is probably doing his Tyrannosaurus Rex impersonation. Mudrick mm. is in the gym That's lifting weird. weights. And, um, of... yeah. It was awful, but I did watch, um, like, another, uh, the Bundesliga game between uh, Dortmund. Oh, don't worry. We'll talk about Bundesliga in a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll have and your safer. But, yeah, yeah. I just couldn't watch it. But I just waiting for the season to be over. Yeah, but Chelsea Manchester United are playing Thursday, so you know. Yeah, yeah I feel like uh, with Chelsea more they they more like give up for this season. That's why like they weren't actually playing. Uh, as you guys said, for City it was like it wasn't even their main players playing. No, 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 no. Yeah. With yeah. City, it's more like they actually have so many stars like they have so many players yeah. even if i don't have like their actual players playing still they have lots of players who can replace them and then and, and play like in an actual like top level mm -hmm. and yes i feel like it also depends on because i know a lot of people say like oh pep guardiola spends a lot of money that's why he has made a great team but like as we can see even with almost with his third team he still manages to win like games versus for example a team like Chelsea he manages to win a game like that and I feel like even players as bench players who come in the pitch and play really well depends on the manager at the end of the day because it's the mm -hmm. manager who makes a player to play and gets the the mm -hmm. desired playing that he wants from a player and I feel like um yeah not a lot of coaches, even with lots of big stars that they have, they can't get a play from a player. But Pep Guardiola is really good at it, and I think that's the reason. Even what's uh, what's not as main main players, but still he manages to do yeah. great. Yeah. I think like oh, this game ahead. is such a good example of like you can spend all the money, but mm -hmm. without like 
a plan mm-hmm. without a coach without a good club system it's not going to do anything because city do spend a lot but pep is the reason why they're so consistently good like you you don't you can spend all that you want but if the fit's not right if the coaching isn't right it doesn't work out and you can kind of see that uh with uh with Chelsea that mm-hmm. without the coach without the sporting director to pull things together you you could spend all the money you want and all you're going to do is sell shirts exactly i think there's also like shirts are shit too so <laughs> yeah there's also like a, an element of a lot of um actually uh, it's it's a misconception to even say city spends more because if you see the 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 amount they spent for uh Julian Al- Alvarez mm-hmm. and he's a very good player and it's not even the only player they spend so much is Grealish and and it's reasonable if you and he's contributing to the team as well and he fits in the system so they have a pretty good idea what they want to do with a player before they buy him not just blindly buying buying players like Chelsea are doing right now yep. and with no vision whatsoever but they look at you look at um the way uh Liverpool and City buy player they buy them to exactly fit into their system and whenever they come in and they come in and they make a difference it's like and even with those players that were playing uh Chelsea the other day some of the players you'd never heard of like the number 87 was that Gomez or something and he yeah. was running like up and down um to one of the best uh like Aspilicueta was struggling to keep up with a with a kid like oh and you never heard of this of this sort of players and they promote players like Foden they yeah. are not the most and they are very young as well and they they have a very good system they have a very good uh coach they have a very good uh recruiting to uh, department as well it's just it's just unbelievable i feel like the the difference with city is that they don't make like really big purchases like for example they don't go pay 222 million for neymar to come and do something for their team mm-hmm. but uh, they do buy a lot of new players new talents they pay them 40 50 million for them and mm-hmm. then again when you sum them up you see that city has spent a lot of money but it wasn't on one player only or two players only but they bring lots of players and they have a great coach and they use them and the other thing about i love about city is that there is no drama really like with chelsea and with other teams there's a lot of dramas that comes out of their academy their players but if you look at man city's players they're not involved in anything really like even grillish is considered like you know very maverick and stuff but you never see them in the tabloids or you never see them like just having and then when they sell the players they already know who they are going to replace them like Sterling was sold and they immediately replaced him and you don't even remember that he used to play for City I was like it's just a very good system very tightly run uh, teams I just think it's yeah <laughs> lovely we talked too much about um, City just being better than Chelsea water's wet <laughs> the sun is bright wow. it's comparison it's a comparison not really a, a criticism per se I'm criticizing I don't care Okay, well, that was the Premier League. Anything you guys want to talk about for the Premier League or you want to just move on to La Liga? I'm just sad a little bit for Arsenal. I uh, really want them to no. win this season. <laughs> no. I, guess, no. I guess they have to wait another 20 years to get a little bit. Yeah, yeah they do. They should That's be sad. glad that they are making to the Champions League for the first time in, what, 15 years? Yeah. Years? That's true. I mean, it's a big yeah. thing for them, honestly. It's a very it's good tough. accomplishment. It's a very big accomplishment, like, you know. You know, they finally, after so long, finished mm-hmm. above Tottenham again. Yeah, long wait for that. <laughs> but anyway, I have to take the small, small victories where I can. There's not much hope for me right now. So, yeah. So what is happening with Tottenham though? Like, they're not oh. thinking about coach. <laughs> they're not thinking about recruitments. Don't even like I could. I we could fill 
three hours of complaints I have about that. <laughs> no, no, don't even get me started. With there, Chelsea, there was a, yeah. There was a point this season where uh, Tottenham Hotspur, we fired our coach and we kept the interim coach, right? Stellini, who had the mm-hmm. same exact tactics as Conte, but just was like <laughs> maybe less mad. And they were just like, this will be good. This is great. When there were managers readily available who could have come in and do something. But they said, no, no, no. We'll just keep this. Our women's team was in a relegation battle. We fired the manager. We kept the assistant coach as interim with the same exact tactics. It was like, and then our at the same time, our sporting director was going to jail for crimes. Not really. He's getting suspended from doing anything in Europe for the Juve crimes. And so it's like, it's just like, I I don't know. They need to do like a factory reset on the club, start over, you know, like turn the, turn the console off, restart it, whatever. It just needs to, we need to start fresh because everything is a mess right now. Um, Yeah. We're not even thinking about appointing a a coach. So, yes. No, we do have someone, we do have someone that we're supposedly going to, to appoint but um who knows Veronica, nothing matters life is meaningless. nothing matters you're so right <laughs> nothing matters that, okay. they can't hurt me anymore that's true you just have Here to keep go. saying that yes we love that okay well enough about fortune let's go now to la liga so first place and the winners of la liga as we know barcelona been there for a long time second place real madrid third place atletico madrid fourth place real sociedad fifth place via real Sixth place, Real Betes, and then 18th, 19th, and 20th place, Reladoid, Espanol, and Elche. Interesting stories here. We love it. But match day 36, let's get into it. Real Sociedad and Armenia, 1 to 0 for Real Sociedad. Celta Vigo and Girona, 1 to 1. Reladoid and Girona, what? No, Barcelona, 3 to 1 for Vela. Did I say? Am I saying the right, the correct score? Because I feel like this is a long time ago for some reason. Am I saying the right thing? I mean, yeah, I'm saying the right things. Yeah, okay, sorry. All right, and then uh, Villarreal and Cadiz. No, sorry, Elche and Sevilla one to one, and red card for Sevilla being not a Villarreal and Cadiz two to nil for Villarreal. Real Madrid and Villa, uh, Real Vallecano two to one for Real Madrid. Real Betis and Getafe. Nil to one for Getafe and a red card for Real Betes. Espanol and Real. That's a good team. Atletico Madrid, three to three, a tie there. And then Mallorca Valencia and then Asasuna and the Club play on Thursday, which will have already been released. So yeah, um, only thing I want to say about this is Barcelona is trying so hard to relegate their rival Espanol, and I am here for it as much as possible. Is that the rival? Am I correct? Can you someone fact check me? Is Espanol their like rival? Yeah, like lots yeah. of people were saying it was a fixed game, so Espanol stays on 19 plays and they end up relegating this season. But <laughs> overall, I think um, well, Barcelona has won the league, so they have nothing to try for anything more than that. And they wanted the Spaniel to stay where they are, so they lost the game. Um, On purpose. That, that that's, that's that's just so funny. Like, <laughs> well, it's real, basically. Real... Like, well, I know that most of people they actually believe that. Like, that's what Barcelona did at the end because there's Rele- relegating your rivals like a huge petty move. Oh my exactly, goodness. exactly. And the other good thing about the game was Lewandowski. Scoring another goal because we want him to stay on top. Goal mm-hmm. scores. And also another good thing for me personally was Kyle Lauren scoring for Valladolid from Canada. And yeah, I really loved it. Yeah. Okay. Any of you guys want to talk about anything here? Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid, um, the ta- ta- Tapas and Madrid, anything? We want to talk about now we can move on to Syria. Oh, I was uh, gonna talk about like the Atletico Madrid, they were leading like close to like 
20 minutes they were leading by two goals and then mm -hmm. somehow they conceded another three goals <laughs> in the second half it's like what and i was like how do you yeah but um i understand they're fighting relegation so that's like a tough battle yeah it and was they uh, already got guarantee uh champions league spot but it? yeah it's like it's weird okay man, then, I, can, oh. I, I can at least say it for you uh, so so um so uh Neges, Niguez. Yeah, oh it's holding uh yeah how do you say is how do you say Saul Niguez? Niguez? Oh, i have no idea like i he was yeah. in chelsea for a while and I oh my so, okay Saul. yeah of course i know Saul. is he good for Atletico madrid at all i i mean he's all right even with chelsea he was actually decent every time he comes in um was he I mean, though was he yeah, though i mean he used to lose the ball a lot but sometimes it, yeah he's decent he was indeed like he he didn't we didn't concede a lot of goals because of him yeah like at the, but he just um, went there on vacation well, actually, he, he fits actually their system and he plays pretty good okay Isn't so he... no, no go ahead go ahead oh yeah the, the one you were talking about earlier how the referees um, in la ligas are fixed it, it and actually there's a lot of rumors the um, that it is actually true they do um their referees do uh, rig the game and nice, uh, nice. there was accusation of like Barcelona paying off uh, some referee about like 10 years ago oh my gosh yeah well, and no. it's like so there's uh, I think there's some truth to that actually and then a lot of the betting companies when they look at the stats for when you look at the stats for La Liga it's it's like Every league is different. Every league is very, uh, when it comes to the stats, it's close to accurate, if yeah. not very close. But when it comes to La Liga, it's very, like, it's up and down. And it's very unpredictable as well. So, Yeah, well, fair. Um, so, yeah, uh, Saul scored in 21st minute. Anton Griezmann, the French mm -hmm. Fritz, mm -hmm. scored in 44th minute. Then Yanni Carrasco, the speedy... Belgium player scored in the 46th minute. Then Cesar Montes scored for Espanyol in the 64th. Then Josuelo scored a penalty in the 76th. And then Vinicius Dalzoa scored in the 79th minute for Espanyol, making it 3 3. So, yikes. Mm -hmm. I thought Go Madrid bottled it, but hey, good for Espanyol, I guess, coming back. So. Back, yeah. But what do you think is going to happen with uh, Yao Felix with Chelsea and Atletico Madrid? Um, I'm going to guess he's going to stay at Chelsea. That's just my opinion, though. Yeah, he seems to be enjoying Chelsea, but then you never know. I don't know. Yeah. He's getting paid good. He's fine. <laughs> He's having fun. Yeah, he... that's all that counts. He's having fun. Yeah. All right. Okay, <laughs> well, let's go to now to the beautiful league of Syria. And as of right now, we know for a long time, Napoli have won first place. Great job for them. Lazio with uh, 68 points behind Napoli with 86 points. Oh my gosh. In second place, Inter Milano, third place, making it um, great for them. Fourth place, AC Milano. Oh, AC Milano, poor them this season. Fifth place, Atalanta. Sixth place, Roma. Seventh place, Juventus. Then 18th, 19th, and 20th place, Verona. Piemonte Monse in Sampdoria. Messi 36. Let's get into it. So, Sashwalo and Monza. One to two for Monza and a red card for Sashwalo. Can I want to say and Bologna, one to five for Bologna and at what? Hey, let, just let me do it, guys. I'm so sorry. I I forgot to. I I wanted to do this as much secret as possible. I should have whispered. Next time I'm probably gonna whisper this. But there is a guest here that wants to say the scores. So let me just get him here and uh, you know let him talk as Kevin De Bruyne says. So. Okay, well, you know what? This is gonna probably take a minute, so hopefully it'll take a. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, let me. Okay. Yeah, guys, here we go. Yeah, this. Hey, everybody! Chase thought was gonna get away from that, but no, you don't get away from Chris Pratt. So let me get into this match day thirty six. Let's get it. I already said the like half the league. It's fine. I could do it myself. So everybody, I'm Chris Pratt. Go see my new movie, uh, Super Mario Bros. It's in theater. You can watch it. 
hey, you do whatever you want. Just don't watch Bowser. That guy's a bad guy. It, ugh, disgusting. So Shoshwallow, Monza, one to two for the Monza, and a red car for Shoshwallow being bad like the Goombas. What the hell are even them? They look like turds with legs. Come on, I say, and Bologna, one to five for the Bologna. We like Bologna. It's yummy. It's nutritious. And a red car for Bologna because sometimes Bologna gets a little bad if you burn it in the oven. But it's okay. I'm Mario. I'll eat it. I'm Italian. Whatever. Atalanta, Verona, three to one for Atalanta. Great job for Atlanta. So, great job, Atlanta United. We like that. MLS, AC Milano and Sampdoria. 5-1 to one for AC Milano, battering the Sampdorias. It's a great job for AC Milano's. Lace and Spezia, nil to nil. Boring, oh, uh, sleeping like me when I watch Bowser. Boring guy, come on. Torino, Florentina, 1-1 one to one for, oh, no, nothing. It was a tie. You know how to tie your shoes. Look to loop and pull. We learned. Napoli and Inter Milano, three to one for the champions of Italia. Three to one for Napoli and a red card for Inter because naughty, naughty. We like that. That's okay. I'm Mario. Udinese, Lazio, one to nil for Lazio. Great job for Lazio. They are great. Like me in my new movie, Super Mario Bros. with Chris Pratt. I'm Chris Pratt, of course. Roma and Salentana, two to two. A tie there. Not good for Roma. Like, not good for Bowser's. Brr. Like, what the hell is he even saying? Monster. Impoli and Juventus four to one for Impoli, making it even worse for Juventus since they got the dug dug deducted ten points. I, I can't speak English because I'm Italian, Chris Pratt. So yeah, go see my movie Super Mario Bros. Stomp on a Goomba if you ever see one because Mario knows what Mario's best. So hey, bye guys, peace out and Super Mario Yahoo. Okay, guys, that was great. Anybody want to talk about the series or just talk about Guardians of the Galaxy because Chris Pratt's here. Whatever you, whatever you guys want to prefer to say about it. So, oh, I mean, I can say Inter Milan, congratulations, they won the Super Copa today. So, they beat Florentina 2-1. Um, to one. Congratulations to them. Ooh. Yeah. So, you guys want to talk about anything here? So, or just move on? Just a fun fact. Um, 1986 was the last time when Napoli won Syria. It was yep. when Argentina also won World Cup. And this year again, same thing. Wow, that's kind of crazy. I don't think I realized that. That's it's sweet. So, so sarcastic, Veronica. Uh, I did not mean to. I just haven't <laughs> spoken any words recently. So I think it came it's out fine. weird. It's fine. It's fine. Wait, wait. I didn't but even it is hear... cool. I didn't but know. It was, it was probably for Maradona, you know. Yeah, true. That's, that's what I was thinking. East. He deserves it. He deserves it. Um, sad that he's not here to see it, but it is what it is. Um, that sounds so bad. It's not. It is what it is. But yeah. Um, yeah. I wish he was here to at least see Napoli win because that would have been great for the city. But yeah, Napoli as well too. The whole city was absolutely livid after the win. So great job for Naples. So yeah. Um, Bundesliga. Ooh. Ooh. Yes, I'm very happy about this. So I'll get into this right now. Bundesliga. First place, Dortmund. Second place, Bayern München. Third place, RB Leipzig. Fourth place, New Berlin. Fifth place, Freiburg. Then 16th, 17th, and 18th place, Bochum, Schalke, and Hertha Lynn. Match day 33, let's get into it. Past weekend. Freiburg and Wolfsburg, 2 to 0 for Freiburg. Red card for them, big Nazi as well, too, but still great for Freiburg with the win. Hoffenheim and Union Berlin, 4 to 2, a great game here. Hoffenheim took that win home. Let's go. That sounded so enthusiastic, but good job for Hoffenheim. Werder Bremen, Cole, 1 to 1, a draw there. Schalke, Eintracht Frankfurt to watch this game. Ah, Eintracht Frankfurt, another sad result, but it was a decent game. So, 2 to 2, a tie there. Hertha Berlin and Bochum, 1 to 1. A lot of ties today. I mean, I mean, it's past weekend. They just like tying the shoes. It's fine. Then Bayern and Leipzig, one to three for Leipzig. Great job for them. And Nkunku doing great for Leipzig as well, too. And yeah, yeah, it's not good for Bayern. They are slipping points and possibly slipped on the title. They did at Arsenal. Mainz and Stuttgart, one to four for Stuttgart. Augsburg and Dortmund, three to nil for Dortmund. Great job for Dortmund. Being out Augsburg and a red card for Augsburg. Hey. Then Leverkusen and 
by Munch and Gladbach. Two to two, a draw there. Not good for Leverkusen, but great for Munch by Munch and Gladbach and a red card for Leverkusen. So, guys, basically, it's coming down to the last game. That's all I gotta say. Dorman, it's simple as this. Dorman wins this next game. Who are they playing this game? Um, Mines? Mine, oh, they're playing. Oh my gosh, yes, I forgot. Mines is a good yes. team. Too. Mines yes. is a good team too. Ooh. Wow, they just lost uh, against uh, Stuttgart. They did, so, they did, but Mines have been. And it was team. pretty bad. Huh? And it was pretty bad, like 4 no, four one. Yeah, yeah. I can't see them winning against uh, Dortmund. You never know. You never know. I don't know. I would uh, definitely. No, no, no. Come on, you guys. Like, well, yeah, actually. That, <laughs> you got to be that, careful with your jinxes. Because Bart, you know, uh, what's it called? I'm They're superstitious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's the thing. I want Dortmund to to steal it so badly, yep. but I am also afraid <laughs> because they've done stuff like this before. <laughs> And I'm a Spurs fan, so I don't trust anyone. Um, but yeah, no, I, I hope they figure it out though. And if no. not, like maybe mines could just, I don't know, like they're in ninth, whatever, just like kick the ball in your own net a couple times, whatever, yeah. you know. It's been like, what, 11 years, 10 years or something since yeah. Byron's been winning the league? Just yep. break it up. Yep. League solidarity. Come on, you guys. I can't me. I mean, the, the, the thing is, I think there's like very slim chance that they might lose it. So there's like the stats are stacked on their favor. So they yeah they have to just uh, draw or win in order to win the whole thing. Yep. So I, I have faith. Come on. Yeah, I yeah. mean Dortmund needs that win or tie. Yeah, definitely. Mines, but mines I, they've been solved this season. I'm not gonna say that I wouldn't be surprised if Dortmund does lose the game because mine's half looking very, uh, pretty good this season but yeah Bayern is playing cold and cold and have to do it so yeah. but yeah all I gotta say it's down to the wire and it's only Dortmund's choice to lose so they have been known as being the arsenal of the Bundesliga so will they slip up for another loss in the Bundesliga that's <laughs> their choice I really like. I really have a faith on this. Like, because if you look at the the way they've been winning recent games, they've been pretty good. And uh, Ala have been squad. on fire. Just like, oh, everything is working out. It's I don't know. The stars are aligned now. You never know though. Okay, uh, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so um, league one, we can get into that right now. So really quick. Um, So PSG first place, then second place, and I say third place. And let me just go with uh, the 18, 19, and 20 place. Um, it is Cleus, Azacio, and Angels. So lovely time. Match day 36 out of 38. Let's get into it. Lyon, Monaco, three to one for Lyon. Nantes and Montpellier, and it is nil to three for Montpellier. Great job for them. Lille and Marseille 2-1 for Lille. Natasio and Yen. Lille to 5. Bad match. Hey, match right. Natasio. Well, yeah. No bad. Natasio, but red card for them too. Nice in Toulouse. Nil to nil. Then Reim and Angels. 2-2. Two two, a draw there. Then Trias and Strasbourg. 1-1. One one, and red cards for both teams. Best. Famous Foods. 2-1 two two for Best. Lorient and Lyon. 1-3 for Lyon. Then Aliel and Yergi. One to two for PSG. Anything you guys want to say here at all about League One? Because I have nothing else to say besides Uber Eats. Make me out. Ah, no, not really. How does get the lens get the uh, second place? Is this weird? Wow. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I thought they were gonna steal the title for a little bit, but really, like, wait. Oh no. Wow. Okay, that's pretty close. I never heard it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, now let's get into our favorite time of the time. I said time twice. So, Champions League, it is up. It is. Oh, this is great. Um, Champions League is coming up and coming faster than ever. Great. Man City and Inter Milan. That's really all I got to say about this. So, I mean, I'm gonna go over this quickly. 
Combis, who do you think is going to win this? I mean, the, the win probability is already set. 69% and steady. Very nice. Um, what percentage? Um, what do you think? Uh, I just can't wait for Pep Guardiola to win his another Champions League. It's been so long. This team's been great. I just feel like he has been very unlucky a little bit. Not, not a little bit actually. Very unlucky. Yes. And I just can't wait to see him winning it again. And yeah, let's go for a city. Um, Solomon, do we even have to ask you who you want to win? Or <sighs> yeah, I mean, the stats, you know, say what they say, but you never know. They might Pep might overthink this and then just ruin it. It's just one game, and I am hoping and praying Inter wins it again. You love praying. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Fair, fair. So, yeah, Inter. I'm saying Inter because, you know, hope, whatever. It is what it is. All right, well, we can now go into Europa League and just some predictions about this. So, it is Sevilla and Roma. So, Jose Mourinho's Roma side after winning the Europa Conference League last year coming in in the Europa League to play Sevilla. It's going to be big. And who are we saying for this? Solomon, who do you want to win? Oh, my God. Like, uh, I've been... Yeah, I be, I think we said the last time it's gonna be between Roma and Sevilla before the play the game was even played. Yep. So I'm always gonna be, ah oh man, I I like uh, Jose Mourinho. Um, just like Roma has been on fire and they have uh Tommy Ram and then a lot of players. So I want Roma to win this, and I know they're gonna win it. Like Jose has never lost a final before. And he's <laughs> not gonna start now. Okay. So okay. I think, yeah. And he's a very serial winner. Like, he wins. Like, that's that's his, in his... And he knows how to get the best of players in the but final. And again, it's Sevilla. They are a serial winner for Europa League. So. <sighs> oh, yeah, yeah. That is true. Tough. But now, come on. It's Jose Mourinho. He knows how to make the difference. He knows the little things true that actually and wins defense. you Champions League and that wins you Cups. And he's just, come on, I have a full faith that Roma are going to get this trophy. Fair, fair, hey, fair. Um, Combes, who are you saying for this one? Who do you think is going to win, uh, Sevilla or Roma? I don't know if you guys want to cancel me for this, but I would call Europa League Sevilla League, honestly, at this point. <laughs> no, 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 they've won 13, like, Europa Leagues. I, I, yeah, I know. Don't worry. Well, yeah. So there we go. Like for that, I'll go for Sevilla again, and I hope they win. No, not gonna cancel you. Fully agree. It is what it is. Yeah. Roma. I I hope Roma wins, but it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. Sevilla league. <laughs> I need to change that next time. All right. Then we can also say the women's Champions League as well is up next, and Barcelona and Wolfsburg. I'm gonna say I want Wolfsburg to win. I wonder yeah. why. I wonder why. So. Maybe because they beat Chelsea. It is what it is. <laughs> um, Combis, I'm going to guess that you're going to go for Barcelona. No surprises here. Obviously. Yes. Yeah. Yep, there we go. Um, Solomon, you're going for Wolfsburg because Chelsea got beat. So. Yeah, no, no, no. We go for the underdogs over here. Like, we want the small team. Eh, Wolfsburg is not really a small team, especially for the women's scene. They've always been big. So, Ooh. yeah, it's I usually I just, Arsenal, I just Wolfsburg, would like to, yeah. Lyon, Barca. Yeah. Yeah, Wolfsburg. I'm gonna go for Wolfsburg for sure. Fair. Fair. Okay, and then Alfco, we have to remember there is something else. Ooh. It is the Europa Conference League between Florentina, the Italian team, and West Ham United in England. Yeah. Um who are you gonna say for this one? I'm gonna ask Combes first who you want to win. West Ham or Florentina? Mm, I would say West Ham. Okay. Fair. From Premier League, yeah. Okay. Yeah, great. Shout. And then um Solomon, who are you singing for this one? Florentina or West Ham? Yeah, I'm gonna say uh West Ham as well. Fair. All West, right. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, again I'm just way too confident with some of my predictions, but I don't see them winning. Don't like uh West Ham losing this game. 
Yep. Yeah. I, I I think you might be right because Fontina is coming off of a kind of a slump of losses, yeah. and after losing one final, I really don't know if they'll be able to conjure up another one. But hey, power to no, them. No, but again, you have to look at the quality of players that West Ham has. Yeah, oh yeah, of course, right. of course, of course. But then again, Fontina has an amazing squad too. There's a reason yeah. they're doing so well right now and got to a final. So just gotta remember um, that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, are you guys ready? Or some new thing. I'm kind of sad Veronica's not going to be here for this, but um, give me a second. Uh, Solomon, can you just um, um, just entertain for a second? I just need to go get something really fast, and it'll take a second. So just um, oh. uh, talk. Okay, talk about your favorite Chelsea player. There we go. I don't know if you have one right now, but sure. Just. <sighs> You know, it's pretty hard when the actual team cancels like the award end of the season award for the best players. But right now I think my I would say my best um I think Thiago Silva would be uh, the best player or my favorite player right now. It's just very obvious he's very very solid, very leader uh like he and he does a lot of uh, work on the back as well and every time he's playing he also performs an oh you're still talking great <laughs> i thought there was silence for a second <laughs> <laughs> what no, no you tell me to talk about something i'm really talking about it like, who did you talk about he's oh, going. Just, uh, my favorite player was like tiago silva and stuff oh fair wow. yeah i agree okay well are you guys ready or something new segment on the Golden Goal Show. This episode, I know, is probably going to be like an hour and a half long, but this part's going to be fun. I So, everybody, welcome to the first Golden Goal Show football quiz. <laughs> so, our contestants are Compass and Solomon. Are you both ready to play the first Golden Goal Show football quiz? Yeah, All right, yeah. so it's basically going to be made up of 10 questions, I think. And it's going to be just football knowledge, and whoever has the most points at the end wins a gift card to my heart. How do you feel about that? Pretty good. Yeah. Okay, great. I, You know what? I actually might do Amazon gift cards for this. That's for the future. <laughs> All right, so ready? Start. We're going to start, and each question has 30 seconds, so if you know the answer, shout it out. Okay. We're going to go for the first answer. First question. Ooh, sorry. Right. First question. We're going to start. Harry Kane is now England's all-time joint top scorer. Who else is on 53 goals? Sir Barbie Charlton, Gary Lineker, Michael Owen, Wayne Rooney. I'll repeat the choices. You guys can shout it out, which answer, whichever you want. Sir Barbie Charlton, Gary Lineker, Michael Owen, Wayne Rooney. Wayne Rooney. That's correct. Okay, one point for you. So, who scored two late quarterfinal goals to take on Argentina to the extra time? Cody Gakpo, Valt Vekhorst, Luke de Jong, Memphis Depay. Cody Gakpo, Valt Vekhorst, Luke de Jong, Memphis Depay. Luke? Luke de Jong? It is Valt Vekhorst. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Who missed the final spot? Cake at Brazil's loss to Croatia on penalties. Rodrigo, Richarlison, Neymar, Marquinhos. Rodrigo, Richarlison, Neymar, Marquinhos. Marquinhos. Marquinhos? Come, do you have an answer? What was the answer again? Sorry. <laughs> no, he got it right. It's already. Okay. Uh, yeah, I okay, saw now. this today. Okay. Mar- uh. Morocco goalkeeper Bono has shown all tournament. Which club does he currently pay for? Atletico Madrid, Sevilla, Valencia, Vadad. Atletico Madrid, Sevilla, Valencia, Verdad. What keep? What does Bono currently play for? Morocco keeper. Valencia. It is Sevilla. Sorry, Rondo uh, Kulamwani scored seconds after coming on in France semifinal for France. How many goals did he score after seconds coming on? Twenty-one seconds, forty-three seconds, four seconds, or one hundred? Wait, wait, wait seconds? repeat the question again. Kulamwani scored how many seconds after coming on for France? Twenty-one, forty-three, four, or one hundred eleven? 111? Incorrect. Sorry. <laughs> Lionel Messi has five goals heading into the final. How many penalties did he score in the whole entire tournament? Two, Two. three, four, or five? Two. 
Gumbiz, do you have an answer? Four. It is three. You <laughs> vote the <to> rock. <laughs> okay, just behind Messi's tally, who has four goals for Argentina this tournament? Lotoro Martinez, Julian Alvarez, Enzo Fernandez, Angel Di Maria. Alvarez. Alvarez, is that your final answer? Solomon, yes. do you have an answer? I think it's also Alvarez. That is correct. He Gambes did get this. All right, two more questions. And who has scored four times for France? Adrien Rabiot in the World Cup, by the way. Olivier Giroud, Kylian Mbappe, or Antoine Griezmann? Kylian Mbappe. Mbappe. Is that your answer? Yes. Both of you? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Uh, wait, it, the... it is It is Kylian Mbappe. Though. It's Olivier Giroud. Argentina <laughs> has now played six World Cup semifinals. How many times have they won? Four, five, six, or three? Wait, how many finals have they won? Yes. Four, five, six, or three? Four. Uh, three. Okay. Any other answer? Four. Nope. It's um six. <laughs> France could Wait. still win back-to-back -back World Cups. Who achieved the last? Spain, Brazil, Argentina. Which one? Spain, Brazil, or Argentina? Spain. Uh, Spain, 2002 and 2006. You both are going to say Spain? Yes. Well, it's Brazil, 1958, 1962. So, <laughs> the winner. That was so, okay. It kind of messed up because the, the, the quiz was a little timed. So, oh. yeah, that was that was my bad. But I do know who the winner for this was. Definitely not me, for sure. Yes, it was a Combez. So, Combez, congratulations. Oh, <laughs> you for being the winner for the first Golden Ball show. I'm going to turn into this better next time, but, you know, it was a little too fun. I'll try better next time, so. It was still fun, so. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Okay, well, thank you for doing that little thing. And now we can go on to a fun time, which is Football Memes of the Week, brought to you by Rivals Banters, and also Akin 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 Fumwa, the guy we love so much. So, first meme, and it is indeed about, um, Internal Milan and Man City. So each team has their specialties and their disabilities. I don't know if that's a great word for that, but let's just discuss them really fast. So Inter and Man City. Man City, what do they have? Oil money, expensive players, Erling Haven, Holland, Kevin De Bruyne, attacking football, ball possession, counterattacks, and Guardiola, the tactical evolution manager. What does... Inter Milan have amazing cool. TikTok egg videos. Inzaghi, 100% win rate versus bald managers. That is important. <laughs> and Croatian players, Brozovic. During the past, guys, no, I'm not kidding. The past 11 years, there has been a Croatian on the winning side for Champions League. I'm just saying, that's insane. And Inter Milan has Perisic. Then, of course, Yaya Torre's curse is on Manchester City. So, that's all I got to say. Um, so, we all know who's going to win. Inter Milan, oh. easy. Come on. Let's get it. <laughs> okay. Now, for the second meme, it is indeed about... Ooh, I can't believe this actually was um, this year. So, Tottenham and Chelsea played at the beginning of this season. Two homers, Tuchel and Antonio Conte were the managers for both teams. They had that infamous handshake where they were gripping each other, trying to feel each other for dear life. And uh, Antonio Conte looks like he literally just saw a ghost looking at his hand. But yeah, that's crazy that it happened this season. I mean, this Thomas Tuchel and there's been Grant Potter, there's been Lampard, three managers. And they've only, I saw another meme for Chelsea that they've had three managers and they've only gone up one point since the manager change. That is ridiculous. Only one point. Only one point. It is crazy. I just sound like Italian man. Okay. Well, let's see the last meme. And is indeed about um what's it about? Oh yeah, Mbappe and Lionel Messi. PSG fans, oh my god, the only thing I gotta say is no surprises here. So basically on Twitter, um someone was watching Mbappe play with uh Messi and someone just said Mbappe, Mbappe scored two goals, and someone tweeted, Mbappe brace, I'm alive. And then someone tweeted under him, Messi masterclass. And then the same guy that said Mbappe brace, I, uh, I'm alive, said against Ox Club. 
which means <laughs> against a mid club. Um, and then someone tweeted this conversation says, "Does he know that Mbappe is playing against the same opposition?" <laughs> So PSG fans are literally just arguing against each other. One's probably just the Ronaldo fan, one's probably just the Messi fan, but they're arguing against the same team. Ah, PSG. That's why you don't take this team serious? I, PSG, they're never going to win a Champions League. They're never going to win That's anything. Sad. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, that was the show, guys. And ah, thank you for watching. It was great to have all of you here. This was a long episode, but I hope everybody enjoyed it. We had good times, we had bad times, we had frustrating times, and we had a game show that was scuffed, but I will work on that next time. And that's what it is. So, everybody, thank you for watching on YouTube and on Spotify. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. So with us sharing, but how else are you going to know that, um, I don't know, that Mario knows how to teach about Italian. Uh, name Chris Pratt. But yeah, uh, Combits, thank you so much for joining and for being here while you're happy about Barcelona and City yeah. possibly winning. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was fun being here as always. Of course. Thank you. Yeah, glad to have you here. And then Solomon, of course, thank you for jumping on at the right moment and have a big one. Yeah, sorry about that. No, you're good, you're good. But everybody, thank you for watching the show. And as we say, three, two, one, 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 love, football. Thank you guys for watching, and bye bye.